<laughs> but of course, we didn't go back to the old place. We had a lovely house on Ile Saint Louis, but Larry was never there. If he wasn't entertaining at the gallery, he was at his studio just outside of Paris. <laughs> I was tired of being alone. Tired of wearing these ridiculous outfits Larry painted for me. What kind of life was this? I was just another canvas to him. Just another walking catalog. Where was the simple life Larry and I had had? That vie de bohème. He was obsessed with success. I had to get him back. I couldn't let that happen to me a second time. Suddenly I had an idea. We had dinner together only last week. What do you want? Uh, I have a surprise for you. Aha! Cars, the cars, Louisa, for us 
that Welshman in the part. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, I was still near water, sitting by our beautiful Hollywood pool, alone. I'd done it again, and I'd lost Pinky. Lost him to fame, fortune, his agents, publicity men, secretaries, and his adoring fans. How about my preview in Westwood last night, huh? <laughs> what a gas. Sure was, Pinky. All those Pinky Benson fans screaming, yelling, crying. Ah, oh, the little people. I love them. I love them. And if the studio tries to cut one minute of that film, I'm going to burn that nut house to the ground. Five and a half hours is not too long for a Pinky Benson fan. Yes, Mr. Benson. Now, about the premiere. Everybody in the ball, see? Hi, Louisa. Hi, Pinky. Going in for a dip? No, I'm going to Brown Derby. I got a business luncheon with these creeps. <laughs> Ciao, baby. Ain't you gonna change? What for? You know you can't get in a derby without a tie on. Jeez. And, Pinky, after lunch, you got to tape a speech to send to Jersey City. Yeah, you told me. What's it for? Pinky Benson Day. Big ceremony in your honor. Citizens are getting together to paint the front of the house you were born in, in pink. Yeah? Gee, that's kind of sweet. I wonder who thought of that. I did. Yeah? Well, here's an idea from me. What's the matter with this place? The fans and the buses go by here every afternoon. Let's let them know without a doubt which house is Pinky's house.
Myself. This picture is a cinch to do 50 million at the box office. Yeah, too bad I only get half of that. Yeah. And the studio wants you to co star with Frank, Marlon, and Carrie in a remake of The Four Horsemen. Well, why should I carry those dead weights? I'll play all four. Come on, Kitty, let's it. get out of here. The mountain. Come on. Break it up, Mike. All right. Get down there. Get away from me. Now, set it to our camera. Let's go. Miss Linda Putty, another Pinky Benson discovery. Making new discoveries is the basis of our industry. And now, coming to our microphone, here she is, Mrs. Pinky Benson. My wife has always been my inspiration. Pinky will never get out the front way. Why don't you just slip out the side way, darling? Yes, I guess so, but I, I hate to do this to them. After all, I'm what they came to see. Yeah, yeah, I we know. know. Baby, Come on, so let's this go. This way. Pinky. Bring it up. On. That's all. We want peace. We want peace. We want peace. The little people. I love them. Love them. We want peace. We want peace. We want peace. Ah, bless them. I can't let them down. After all, I'm the stuff their dreams are made of. I belong to them. Hey, Bullet! Look who's here! It's me! It's your Pinky! Look, it's Pinky! your milk now. Aren't we going to wait for Daddy? No, Daddy's finishing the plowing he started this morning. And the princess had four beautiful children. Leonard and Jonathan and Geraldine and Butch. And they all lived happily ever after.
it's real and it's ours. Yours? Yes, you idiot, it belongs to us. You punched a hole in our pipeline. No, 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 it's ours. My wonderful, wonderful failure. It was so beautiful looking down. The lights, the sky, the stars. How I wished I had someone to share it with, not this unsmiling, airborne cigar store Indian. Then the fatal thing happened. I'm glad you decided to join me. Nice to have someone to share it with, isn't it? Excuse me, sir. Telephone. Zurich? Willard, tell the gentleman I just stepped out. did get to the St. Regis. We were married in New York, in his fabulous penthouse. Thank you, Timothy. Hello. Yes. I felt so safe at last. Rod yeah. had all the wealth and success Hello. he wanted long before he met me. I felt I couldn't Still possibly like jinx his life. Uh -huh. As for the mysterious Melissa, I decided never to question him about it. I dismissed it from my life. A little trinket from Harry Winston. As I look back on it now, our life together was like one of those glamorous Hollywood movies all about love and what'll she wear next. Remind me to tell you later that I love you. I'll remind you if you'll remind me.
Now, Louisa, you look divine. So thank you. You remember Peter, don't you, darling? Oh, but of course. We met at El Morocco the other evening. <laughs> you play beautifully. So nice of you to come. Thank you. That's a beautiful dress. Oh, I'm glad you like it. It's my favorite. My very own favorite. <laughs> I want to talk to you. What is it, dear? You remind me to tell you later that I love you. Ron! Mickey! Louisa! Louisa, darling, here is someone you simply must be. Darling, now you know Nikki Cathcart. Wonderful to meet you. Mrs. Cathcart. How do you do? Louisa. I do hope the two of you can come down to us for a shoot. Mmm, love to. We always get a bang out of a shoot. Remind me to tell you that I love you. just as soon as I change my nightgown. Lord Kensington? Lady Kensington, may I present my wife, Louisa? How do you do? So nice. Delighted. How do you do? We're so happy you could fly in for the evening. I hope the two of you can come down to the Abbey this weekend. Oh, we'd love to. But, darling, I haven't a thing to wear. I'm reminding you to remind me to tell you that I love you. Thank you for reminding me. I'm reminding you that you said to remind me to tell me that you love me. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. Why didn't he tell me before? Hello, darling. I'm sorry I'm late. Will you tell him that he's through? This is total disaster. How could it possibly happen to me? What happened? Louisa, ever since we got married, I've been neglecting my business. I've been so much in love with you that I've paid no attention to it at all. I just let it slide. Well, I've just been reading these business reports. Uh, are you faced with ruin? I am three times as rich as I was the day we got married. Nobody triples the business of Anderson Enterprises but Rod Anderson. Someone has been giving orders. Somewhere, somebody in my organization. Why, that's absolute treachery. Someone's been giving orders behind my back. Imagine that. If I want to lose a fortune, I'll lose a fortune. If I want to triple it, I'll triple it. No one else. I'm going to get to every one of my offices all over the world, and I'm going to find out who's been running things behind my back. Triple it. How could he possibly triple it? Who can the guy be? You spend years training employees, executives, to serve you faithfully, and they stab you behind the back. That's loyalty for you. Willard. Willard, you make arrangements for trips to uh, Sydney, Johannesburg, Hong Kong, and Bombay. I'm looking for somebody, and I'm not coming back until I find them. I knew there was no man to look for. It was only me and my witch's curse. Sleep was impossible. Next morning, Rod would go out of my life forever and meet his doom somewhere. I was terrified. I tried to think of a way to save him.
Melissa, happy days on his uncle's farm. The simple life. Gotta pick up the six o'clock town news for my store manager. Mm, Crawley Gestapo. Oh, yeah. Uh oh, that eyesore. The only spot in town we don't own. But it's just a matter of time before old Hopper will come around. Just like you, baby. Good afternoon, Mr. Crawley. Miss Foster, nice spring weather. weather. All right, make it fast, Disco. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Willoughby was five minutes late getting back from the doctor's today. Uh, five dollars fine off her salary. Yes, sir. Hopper sent back the answer to your latest bid on his property. It's still no. He says he doesn't want to make money. He just wants to keep his little place as it is. Edgar Hopper. I haven't run into him since high school. Hmm, I wonder how many days I get for manslaughter. In Crawleyville, they wouldn't even find you, sir. Hi, Lenny. Edgar, you better watch where you're going. Yeah, you're right, Lenny. I was looking at the sun. Aren't you angry? Why should I be angry? It's my fault. Well, then maybe we could fight. Well, there's no sense doing that, Lenny. You'd kick the heck out of me. All that football, golf, and tennis and everything. You're a real winner, Lenny. What are you, an orthodox coward? No, Lenny, I just believe in passive resistance. Oh, Mahatma Hopper, I presume. No, as a matter of fact, Gandhi and I both got it from this guy, Henry Thoreau. You're all covered with mud, Edgar. Oh, I mean, Mr. Hopper. Louisa. Well, we're Lisa Foster, isn't it? Hey, I haven't seen you since Mrs. Pritchard's class. Hey, you've grown. Or maybe I shrunk. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be covered with all this mud if it let the town pave that piece of road in front of his property like anybody else. It costs too much, Lenny. For what you call his charge for a bag of cement, this town ought to be paved with gold. Thanks, Lenny. Hey, I gotta be going. I don't wanna keep those trout waiting. <laughs> See, uh, don't uh, grow anymore, Miss Foster. You're just right now. Now I say unto you, love thy neighbor as thyself. Tis better to give than to receive. Money is the root of all evil. Mother even had embroidered these very sentiments on samplers for our living room at home. But we were poor, and Mother found it hard to live up to these ideas. Good day, Mrs. Jenkins. Sherman, did you see Emily Jenkins, that sob smothered in a mink cape? I hate her guts. Look what I've got. Her husband was a shipping clerk 15 years ago, same as you. Now look at him. Look at you. Where's your drive? Where's your ambition? That's what counts in this world. Success, money, success, money. President of the Nice Fellows Club. Oh. Money, success. Get to the top. Money, success. Money, 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 money. As the years went by, I saw my dear, sweet daddy dwindle away under this, till you practically didn't know he was there. I began to understand what Mother really meant by those samplers. You play your cards right, and we'll have more money than we need. But Mother, money isn't everything. 
be porters of the property in Crawleyville. But I'm not going to marry him just because he's the richest man in town. He's a sneak and a bore and a drag. And he's been with every girl there is. And besides, I don't love him. There's no such thing as love. He's a snob. He's ashamed of you and where we live. Why, he won't even walk in this house when he comes to call for me. I wouldn't come in here either if I didn't have to. Louisa, you turned out real beautiful. You have something to sell. Take a mother's advice. Sell it now. <laughs> There's Leonard. You better hurry. No, I'm not going. How dare you turn down a man like Leonard Crowley? I tell you, he has money. You go and get it. Leonard was waiting. I thought over everything he had to offer. A You scared the fish away. You could pull me in. <laughs> I am full grown. You said so yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Stop. Here, put this on. Hey, did you catch any? Well, yeah, three, including you. I'll cook them for you. My clothes are right down there. Do you have anything to cook them in? Well, my baronial estate's right over there. Is that where you live? Yeah, I... <laughs> kind of on the simple side, I know. Simple, yes. Oh, our lives are frittered away by detail. Simplify, simplify. What did you say? Our lives are frittered away by, by detail. detail. Simplify. 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 A girl who can quote the role. Oh, I couldn't quote him before I went to the library this morning. I'd never even heard of him before yesterday. Well, you mean you didn't swim by my boat just by accident? Gee. Crawley doing here anyway. Well, now, whatever gave you that idea about me? Well, I don't know. It's, everybody in town takes it for granted. You are engaged to him, aren't you? Well, he takes it for granted. But Edgar, as far back as I can remember, in grammar school, in Mrs. Pritchard's class, you know, when I sat in front of you, I wished that I had had long pigtails so you could stick them in the inkwell. Did you really? I'm not going to marry Leonard Crowley. Of course, he'll never understand anyone turning him down. Especially for you. Louisa. You, you mean you, you take this? Instead of all that? With Louisa, I've got nothing. I'll always have nothing. I'll always be nothing. That's what I want. Nothing. To quote me and not to Rose. I love you. Oh, Louisa. I'll make you happy. I'll never work hard. I'll never make good. I swear it. It's true, Mother. I've married Edgar Hopper. Whereas Mother received the news of my marriage to Edgar with ill-disguised displeasure, Leonard took the news in his stride. For a while, Edgar and I led an idyllic life he went off to the store a couple of hours a week, but the rest of the time belonged to us. As I look back on it, I see our life together as a wonderful old silent movie.
no time. Well, that old water tank always gave you a lot of trouble. Hey, you know, I'm going down to the store one of these days and get some chicken wire, fix these springs. You can do almost anything with chicken wire. I sure do love chicken wire. Leonard. If you're thinking of running some up for dinner, ma'am, I'd be pleased to stay. Hello, Leonard. Hi. Hi. Well, if it isn't a happy hoppers at home. You know, I've been all over the world. It's the first chance I've had to come over and see you, lovebirds. Uh, you know, I saw the Taj Mahal by moonlight, Louisa. Hmm. Oh, but I envy you here. What's that a camera for? Oh, I'm doing a documentary. Slum conditions in uh, Crawleyville. <sighs> oh, come now, Leonard. You needn't be such a sore loser. Well, you see, uh, you, gave me, you gave me up for all this, and I can understand it, you know. Nice roof on your feet, rain a face at night, all the grass you can eat. Hey, Leonard, huh? get out of here before I twist your head off like a turtle. Well, is this the voice of passive resistance speaking? No, just get out of here. Well, another innovation for modern living, huh? Instant shower from the lady. There, I'm afraid well, I'm honey. not a bit handy yet. Oh, no, but you are handy. Perhaps I could use you down at the store doing odd jobs, and I'd tell you, and you could be earning a living. No. Hey, my wife doesn't have to work. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Ed, seriously, Ed, why don't you come down and see me this afternoon and sell me that piece of property of yours? Uh, someone could do something with her. Not you, of course, but uh, someone. I said to get out of here. All right. Get all out right, of here. All right, I will. I'm getting out. Sorry to barge in on you kids like this, but I'll send a Christmas basket. I think I'll go down to the store for a little while this afternoon. But you were there just ten days ago. Well, I've got that chicken wire I want, and uh, some meals. You know, it's, it's end of summer. People come home from vacation. They, somebody might want something. Oh, well, I'll be back. But he never really did come back. Not the Edgar Hopper I knew. When he hadn't returned by the next day, I hurried into town. Louisa. What is all this? Hopper's Taj Mahal, honey, and it's all for you. Listen, Louisa, when that snake rattled into our house, it, uh, something snapped. But where have you been? Why didn't you come home? There you were, mending the roof, my wife. Hop, 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 you shoppers, hop to hoppers. Honey, I want to get you things, dresses and things for the house, the house. But I like our house. Listen, what is it that makes a family go to the same store over and over and no place else? I don't know. Free eats? Free toys for the kitties? That's it. We'll stuff them and then we'll sell them. <laughs> <laughs> hop, 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 you shoppers. Hop, hop, hop to hoppers. Come on, honey, let me show you around. Hey, you kids. Get yeah. up on top there and keep with the hop, 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 to hop. Eddie, this is wonderful. Oh, thanks, folks. Terrific. Thanks for coming. Hi, Eddie. Hey, there's a lot more bargains here than that. We'll be back, Eddie. Okay. Some bargains, Eddie. Congratulations, Eddie. Oh, thanks. The prices are low, the goods are right, so come to Hoppers from morn till night. No kidding, we're open till 10 o'clock every night. How's it going there, folks? Oh, great. Good to hear it. Those are Edgar, all on sale. When will what? we ever see each other? Well, well, honey, as soon as this thing gets going, we'll have more time together than ever. But we had all our time together before. What about Thoreau? Thoreau? But you don't want to keep pace like all the others. You heard a different drummer, remember? Oh, yeah, I hear a different drummer, all right. And the music I hear says hop, hop, Betty. Hop, hop. Well, looks like we got him at last, Crisco. Have we? Do, the people seem to be eating it up. Anybody will run the look of him free. I figure I give him three months and he'll hop, hop himself hop, right into oblivion. Hop, hop, hop. Forgive me, sir. 
but we really must advertise. You're fired. Merry Christmas and a hot, hot, happy new year. Merry Christmas and a hop, hop, happy new year. Oh, that's that's <laughs> no trouble at all, Mrs. Freeman, no trouble. If you can't leave Hoppers, Hoppers leave with you. Hey, Ned, you draw Mrs. Freeman off on the way home, okay? Okay. Oh, thank you, Edgar. And Merry Christmas, Edgar. Be right with you, lady. Merry Christmas to you, Mrs. Freeman. Edgar. <laughs> oh, hi, honey. Excuse me, I gotta get back. But, Edgar, aren't you coming home soon? Oh, I'm sorry, Louisa. We're staying open till midnight tonight. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm just a little lonely, that's all. What? In that big, beautiful new house, lonely? I'm the only one who's ever in it. Edgar, it's Christmas. But yes, and Christmas is business, big business. You're working entirely too hard, darling. Look, honey, by this time next year, we'll be so rich we can take a real vacation. Italy? Italy. Merry Christmas! Besides, what's the matter with work? A little hard work never killed anybody. Merry Christmas! Hi there. Edgar's hard work included hitting out with every modern sales device known to man, and Crawleyville was his captive audience. We were millionaires overnight. Darling, I checked the hotels in Rome and I had the reservations for our vacation. I'm sorry, honey, that'll have to wait till next year. Next year? Yes, next year. In the meantime, get yourself a couple of art books and a box of spaghetti. Oh, you liar! You cheat! You deceived me! Deceived me? You think I got a blonde tootsie on the side or something? Oh, I just wish you had! At least then I'd know you were relaxing! <laughs> Shmimplify. A little hard work never killed anybody. Edgar was like someone bewitched, like the sorcerer's apprentice. He couldn't stop. Get me 300,000 feet of rust-proof chicken wire. Listen, what is with our order on the Mother Goose Atomic Disintegrator Kit? No, make them think they can't live without doorknobs that light up in the dark. Think big! Our musical mop, which plays Let Me Call You Sweetheart, I'm In Love With You, is a marketing failure. Get something happier, like Stars and Stripes Forever, to guarantee musical mop-up. <laughs> So it is just a simple equation. Service quotient X plus condensation atmospheric quotient Y plus smile and affability quotient X show in the last three months a sales gain line that has hop, hop, hop right off the lousy board. In short, boys, we are becoming, by the figures, the big, bigger, biggest. Uh, in re yours of the 23rd, I am impatiently awaiting your order uh, hastily. Yours, Edgar Hopper. Uh, there can be no delays. If you insist on delaying, you'll always be replaced. Uh, hastily yours, Edgar Hopper. Since your delivery service has not been quick enough, we are terminating our agreement with you. Uh, hastily yours, uh, Edgar Hopper. I'd like all those folders rushed out to the entire mailing list by at least Monday. Hastily yours, Edgar Hopper. Order canceled. We ask you for good. You gave us promises. Hastily yours, uh, Edgar Hopper. All the displays in all of the branch stores must be changed daily and rotated. Hastily yours, Edgar Hopper. That is my final word on the subject. Hastily yours, Edgar Hopper. I've got to have 10,000 bed springs at once. Hastily yours, Edgar Haper. Heber. Uh, hop, uh, the, uh, hastily yours, the hophead. Uh, hastily yours, uh, the boss. I like that all in triplicate right away. Mr. Hopper, no one can work like this. The pace is too fast. We're not machines. We're human beings. Miss Bickford, there is no place here for anyone who cannot keep up with the pace of modern living. You are fired. <laughs>
me my house, quick. You just closed the deal. My wife, hurry. Leonard Crowley just handed over the keys. Louisa. Louisa, Louisa. Hello. Louisa, it happened. What's happened? The next time you walk down Main Street, don't be any Crowley's there. It's going to say, Hoppers. Louisa, I did it. I wiped them out. He's through in this town. Oh, I guess that's what you wanted, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I got what I wanted. And I got money, wealth, success, position. And next year, this town is going to be called Hopperville. And how do I get all these things? Through work. Just good, hard work. <laughs> Which all goes to prove that a little hard work never killed anybody. Crawley home, the Crawley stables, Crawley's department store. But then there was Leonard himself. Leonard Crawley was, uh... Hmm, how shall I say it? Well, that's not fair, I guess. He was just Leonard Crawley, son of wealth. Put it right down next to mine, baby. Gee, I wish I'd said that. Ah, oh, you can use it any time you want. Just give credit to Crawley. That's more than Crawley ever did for anyone else in this town. Oh, by the way, you better let your mom know that the payment's due on her refrigerator. Don't let her get the idea that because we're getting married, I'm going to let her off the hook. Whoa. By the way, she couldn't be your real mother. She must have been left on your front doorstep one stormy night in a cage. Why are you so intent on marrying me when it's perfectly obvious I'm indifferent to you and all the so-called advantages you have to offer me? That's just it, baby. You're the only girl in town who doesn't throw herself in front of me in the mud and scream, take me, take me. You know, you suggest good breeding. Heaven knows where you got it from. But uh, also, you produce me an heir, and uh, then my mother stopped nagging me about carrying on the Crawley tradition. Any better reason than that for getting married? Hmm? How about love? Love? Well, let me put it this way, honey. I'm very rich and you're very poor. And sooner or later, you're going to come around. Mm. You know the indifference I felt? Hmm? Well, it's beginning to change. It's beginning to blossom into complete contempt. <laughs> but to tell you, honey, I told you you were going to come around sooner or later. Bus tours were thrilling and exhausting. Pas de la des jardins de. Est-ce que? I ain't got all day, lady. Where do you want to go? Oh, you speak English. All of us foreigners do. It's compulsory. You American? No, nah, lady, I'm a Russian spy for the CIA. Well, what would it be, huh? Go to the American ghetto at the bar at the Georgia Sank or go visit some of your phony friends learning about life at Les Dumago. Well, frankly, I'd like to do either, but... Uh... I don't know anybody here. Mais dis donc toi, tiens pas de là rapidement, hein? Ah, pourquoi? Bah parce que je veux stationner. Mais je suis là maintenant, vous démarrez. Mais tu peux pas stationner ici, voyons, t'as une femme dans la voiture. Non, c'est vous qui allez foutre le con. Sans ça, je vais vous faire avaler oh. votre langue. Sans blague. Vous ne voyez pas que je suis en train de parler à une dame? Oh, oh qu'est-ce que tu me racontes dans la famille? Eh, fais ce que je dis, bon, je te vois pas dans. Uh, well. Oh, well. Uh, well, I think I'd like to see some more pictures. I've just been through the Louvre, and that was wonderful. The Louvre. Now, what is that? It's a garbage pail of the arts. Hey, boo! Allez, allez. Démarrer. Well, uh, how about the show at the Gallery Lafayette? That's a department store, lady, but I'd rather hang up one of their face towels than some of that other junk. Listen, I'm sure you're an expert taxi driver, and I don't mean to belittle your profession, but why should I listen to your opinion on art? Because I happen to be one of five people today who could definitely be called an artist. Maybe six, including Frida. Who's Frida? Chimpanzee on my block. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I mean, you'd see a technique like that, it just wipes you out. I'd go away. What is it? What is it? Innocent. Van Gogh had it. But uh, he had to chop his ear off in order to free himself. Free himself from what? Intellectual hang-up. Now, if we could all do that, go back to a life like that, uncluttered, unhung. Simple. Oh. Well, Frida had the best teacher in the world, you know, Rene Carrier there. <laughs> I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Carrier. I'm Louisa May Hopper. You don't look anything like the Emile Desjardins that said you are in your cab. The name is Larry Flint. I used to take Emile's cab out for him once a year the day his wife has her baby. Frida is finished now. It's a masterpiece. Look at the line and the color and the sweep and the texture. Marvelous. A testament to the human spirit. Total primitive articulation. Does Frida's work fail? No! You think Frida cares what her work sells? You think I care what my work sells? Typical American yardstick, the eternal buck. That's why I left the place. Well, uh, Mr. Flint, I was only asking. And the next... Ah! What's that? She's at it again. Well, is someone being murdered? Ah! Are we going for the police? Hey, Larry, you shot three already. Hey, Polly, you're working again. Yeah. One of the greats. Oh, that picture makes me sick. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, Thanks. feel sick. It should make you feel sick. It's destruction, pure and simple. That's what today is all about. That technique is her way of expressing it. Oh! oh. <laughs> what was I doing in Paris, 4,500 miles away from home? It was fate. I had come to meet Larry Flint, an unspoiled, dedicated artist, searching in his own troubled way for the simple life. Suddenly, I knew I wanted to share that life. Well, I never did go back to the Ritz. I'll never forget the wedding. Frida made a lovely bridesmaid. As a matter of fact, she caught the bridal bouquet and ate it. For a while, Larry and I led an idyllic life. As I look back on it, it all seems like one of those wickedly romantic French movies. Pray, toujours plus pray.
rest of the time, I kept house. Ah, la vie des bohèmes. Le sacrifice des amours. This week's dinner. Oh, darling, how oh, beautiful. How did you? Oh, for seven, five, two. But darling, that's one of your most beautiful paintings. Well, we can see it any time we go to the butcher shop. Monsieur Blanchard has got it hanging right over the tripe and the sweetbreads. But I've told you so many times in the United States and America. Don't touch it. Not a nickel. Money corrupts. Art erupts. Oh, that's a beautiful saying. It's immortal. I just made it up. Hey, uh, so listen, why don't you bring some of that downstairs for me? Well, yeah, I got some erupting for you. I trade, like I told you, see, the sound, the sonic vibrations, they go in there, and then that gets transmitted to that photoelectric cell, which gives those dynamic impulses to the brushes and the arms, and it's a fusion on a mechanized world and a human soul. But it's the only affirmative statement being made in the world of art today. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. It's a terrible thing being so dumb. Why, well, you're really not so dumb, honey, because to tell the truth, I don't understand it myself. Sonic palette. The sonic palette. Silly kid, go ahead. Oh. Mendelssohn Spring Song. That's my favorite. I like the ones you make with your own noises. They're the real you. Yeah, but, uh, I hate to waste a good canvas, so I might try to pay a bill with it. <laughs> well, maybe the butcher won't know the difference between a real Larry Flint and a Mendelssohn. Hey, Louisa! Hey! Guess what? What, darling? I didn't leave it at the butcher's. I was there showing it to him, and there's this uh, customer in there buying pig's knuckles. So um, he, he looks at the, the picture, and then he puts on his glasses, and he gives me his card, and he gives me 40,000 francs. That's almost $200. Oh, why, that's wonderful, darling. 
all from that silly little idea. Yeah, well, I gotta go downstairs and get to work. I'll be listening for all those dear funny little noises. show was a smashing success. Larry was famous and rich overnight. In the middle of this excitement, I was filled with apprehension, although I tried to conceal it. I'm insufferably honored. Frida and I are very happy. At last, painting which is music and music which is painting. How do you do it? No, oh, how can anyone explain the workings of the inner man? Actually, the act of creation might best be described as pure animal instinct. If only Beethoven were alive, he would just hear this painting. Ah, yes, Beethoven Ludwig, I think he'd be very pleased. Your paintings make me want to kneel, pray and cry. Well, in that case, Baroness, why don't you buy one? Then you can kneel and pray and cry at home. <laughs> Translation, master! Oh, please, please let me introduce you to all Paris. Well, thank you very much, but me wife and I don't take much to our places. We'll just go back to our little garage and attic. I got work to do. <laughs> After several months of trying to lose myself in Paris, I decided to leave. Charlie back to town? Oh, Mr. Anderson. Should I get that, please? <coughs> no, no, I'll take it from here. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Excuse me, Mr. Anderson. Overseas call, sir. San okay. Francisco. Excuse me. Hello? Uh-huh. I recognized him immediately. Unbalding, glamorous Rod Anderson, Jr. Millionaire tycoon, up from riches. Inheriting 10 million from Senior Anderson's maple syrup empire. Unmarried, he seemed to have no trouble in getting what he wanted, in uh -huh. business or in yeah. pleasure. Quiet. Thank you. Well, Mrs. Plimp, where would you like to go? I was sorry to read of your loss. I saw you at one of your late husband's openings. I didn't buy anything, though. I don't like his paintings. Well, I don't like your airplanes. Where are you going? New York, Miami, Kirkutsk, any place you'd like to go. I just flew in from New York this evening for some party. I stayed about a half an hour, and if I'd had it, I don't like parties. So you just put on your Superman suit and fly away home. That's right. And there it is. Or don't you accept hitches from strange men? Oh, I know who you are, Mr. Anderson. I just don't know if I'll be very good company. I just don't. <laughs> I don't have much small talk. I haven't any time for small talk either. Excuse me, Mr. Anderson. Overseas call. Hong Kong calling. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. All right. Sell it. Thank you. Well, where shall it be? New York. New York it is. What was I getting into? What was on that plane? I looked at the name of it. 
Melissa. Naturally, it would be named after a woman. I'd heard enough about those dissolute playboys. <laughs> is ready. Pretty name, Melissa. It's someone I knew a long time ago. Good evening, Mr. Anderson. Good evening, Mark. Mark, this is Mrs. Flint. She'll be Mrs. flying back with us. What sort of weather have we? It's clear, sir, all the way through to New York. Excellent. Good evening, Willard. Good evening, Mr. Anderson. Willard, this is Mrs. Flint. Good evening. Mrs. Flint will be flying back with us. Happy, yes, sir. Her bag's left on the 1119. You have them picked up at Idlewild and delivered to, uh... uh. The Montclair Hotel. Such a favorite? Well, I've, I've never uh, been in New York. Only for a few hours en route. Mm -hmm. You better make that uh, my suite at the St. Regis, will you? Uh, very good, sir. It's reserved for visiting executives. I camp about uh, 10 blocks further up the street on Fifth Avenue. And Willard, have the chef come around and take Mrs. Flint's order, will you? Yes, sir. If you have anything you like. We have some rather fine wines aboard. I'll uh, just have my usual. Yes, sir. Whatever you have is all right with me. Oh, really? My usual has two soft-boiled eggs, gluten toast, and a glass of yogurt. And Willard, Mrs. Flett will have the uh, creme Senegalese steak, Diane, pomme souffle, uh, profiterole with uh, chocolate sauce, and break out a bottle of Latache. Oh, very good, sir. And that'll be all, Willard. Thank you. Now, let's step into the bar. Make you one of my very special martinis. Oh, thank you, no. I'll have a, a, a scotch on the rock. Uh, on the rocks. Oh, very well. I was raised on maple syrup, you know. It cured me of drinking anything at all. Oh, well, then I won't have... No, no, no. You go right ahead. Drink up. Good for you. A telephone? Watkins in Chicago. Excuse me. You know, you really are rather beautiful. But, uh, is that your hair? Yeah, hello. Okay, you just sit tight. No, no, I think Prescott's bluffing anyway. True, there was no orgy on board. He wasn't the Diamond Jim Brady of the jet set. But he was arrogant, cold, sure of himself, ordering people around. Another object lesson in what money and power can do to a human being. Well, for all of it, he really seemed to be a miserable and lonely man. Why, he never even smiled. Not once had a smile lit that stony, sunless face. Well, a tycoon's work is never finished, is it? That's what you call yourself, isn't it, a tycoon? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every morning I get up and look at myself in the mirror and I say, Good morning, tycoon. I, uh, I know you don't approve of me, Mrs. Flint, but that need be of no concern to either one of us. I'm going into my office now. I've got some work to do. I promise not to interrupt by calling out points of passing interest or the weather conditions over Baffin Bay. I'll see you in New York, and don't forget the passenger seat belt. What was wrong with my hat, anyway? Okay, Mark, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, sir. I wondered who Melissa was. Some forgotten Hollywood starlet, no doubt. I was scared. I hated being alone during the takeoff. Let it be. 
began to happen. We were planning a birthday party for Pinky after the last show. Well, I guess we got everything, the hot dogs, the rolls. Hey, look at the clock. I gotta get made up. Oh, you've got time? No, I don't. I have less than two hours. It takes you two hours to get out of that makeup. Yes. You'll be late for your party. Couldn't you just skip it? Skip a performance? No, skip the makeup, I mean. Do it just as you are. Oh, don't be silly, darling. The makeup's a whole act. Here's the bucket of lemonade, Frankie. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Trentino, because of the party, would it be all right if, if Pinky went on tonight without putting on all his stuff? Sure. You don't want to miss your birthday party. Okay, honey. Uh, I feel, I feel naked. I... Oh, leave out the verses, too. Leave out the verses? <laughs> Just this once. Well, all right, on account of the party, but... I feel funny. I, I'm going to lay an awful leg. <laughs> and now for your the well done, green peas, Your secretary. choice is your own ha ha boy, a pinky offensive. Let's get out of here. Waiter, Chad. <laughs> well, I. <laughs> Frankie dropped him in a second because they said, hey. It was the fifth. I was there. <laughs> Sure, help yourself. One rare hash brown. We got a fresh wash. I think that you and I should Lord get acquainted. Well I'll just come up to you and ask your name. I'll tell you mine. I'll say, isn't the weather fine? And aren't you really glad? So glad that you came, then after you and I become acquainted, I'll ask you if you'd like to stay a while. Hey, you got, You'll you say got you would, you'll give me a smile, oh, goody good, you'll make my evening worthwhile. And before our little round of we won't be just acquainted. We'll be the very, very best of friends. That you and I should get acquainted. We had a simple, modest little farm. Two dozen leghorns for me to look after. And a cow named Melissa. Melissa the second. And a bull named Melrose. <laughs> well, Ma, how do I look? I look real fine. Wonderful, Pa. Real elegant. And one more nip from our local cider. Well, it's my fourth, and I'm not a drinking man, but seeing as I was welcoming day, here's to you. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Anderson. Good day, Mrs. Anderson. Have another drink. Oh, I'm driving. Oh, <laughs> 
I'm sure glad I listened to you. This is our first day here, and already I realize that this is what I always wanted to come back to. And you made me do it. Uh oh. Feeding time. I'll go feed Melissa and you milk the chickens, huh? Been waiting a lot of years for that. Can't I wait till tomorrow? That well, shows how much you know about farming. You don't milk her now, and she'll be moo mooing all night long. Let's go. Hello, Melissa, baby. Uh, so, oh. How you doing, honey? Just great, honey. That's a girl, Melissa, baby. Mm. Ooh, baby. Ooh, Melissa. That's a of my holdings, cash and securities. Several months after the wife. funeral, and I had to listen to the grim business details. Rod had sold out everything so quickly that his fortune was pitifully reduced. It came to a mere hundred and fifty million dollars. I felt alone and lost, and I was determined to live alone for the rest of my life. It was the only fair thing to do. Coffee here. Isn't there any way of getting a cup of coffee here? What's your name, miss? Uh, Louisa May Hop. 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 Liv. Anderson. Isn't there any way of getting a cup of coffee here? Ask Louisa May. Hop, hop. Hop, Flay Anderson, pretty eyes, pretty hair, and she has so clear. Isn't there any way of getting a cup of coffee here? <laughs> uh, Louisa May, Hop, 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 Flay Anderson, huh? That, that's a funny name. It's just Anderson. <laughs> Please stay, Miss Anderson. I I'll get you a cup of coffee. Clancy must must be out back somewhere. I'm in here all the time. Say, uh, I uh, hope you didn't think I was being fresh. That's just part of my act, you know. I get a list of the customers' names each night before the show, and then I make up little rhymes using all their names. It's one of my specialties, that ad lib stuff. Coffee, sugar, Danish, third Danish. And four of big finale and after. There's our pinky. Always at it. Pinky, ain't you ever off the floor? Why, it's Herbert Bodkin, I do declare. And Ernie Wilkins, who's with him there. I said with a grin, Ernie, your hair is getting thin. And Ernie answered, who wants fat hair? <laughs> That's true, I uh, never seem to stop being on. No, oh, I liked it. Are you performing around here? Am I performing around here? Who? That's me, Pinky Benson. Can I get you anything else? It's on me. No, thank you. What's up? I got it, Clance. Thank you. Say, uh, you're not busy later. Would you like to watch my act? I hadn't decided what to do later. I even thought of staying in this town for a few days till I made up my mind. Well... No. 
Uh, well, sure. I'll come. Good. Uh, I gotta kinda rush over there right now. It, it takes me two hours for my props and to put on my costume and makeup. Oh, really? Yeah. How's it going? Well, the management must love me. I've been playing there for 14 years. See you later. Interfere one bit with the sale of food and liquor. Just looking at Pinky made me want to cry. But he was so happy and untroubled. And I feel at home here, as you can see. And in all the 14 years, you never wanted to play anywhere else. Oh, you mean uh, the big time? Mm -hmm. Boy, why does everybody seem to think you have to want to play the big time? Why? You get to the top of the ladder, you're a slave to your fans, you got no life of your own. Then you got to start worrying about staying up there. Oh, no, not for me. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And you know what? I teach dancing to kids in the daytime. That's nice. Yeah. My, uh, my wife wanted me to get ahead. She wanted me to get an agent, press agent, publicity, audition, push, push, push. Your wife? Yeah, I was married once. We were, we were a team. She always wanted me way up there, so I let her go. And today, that woman is Greta Garbo. <laughs> <laughs> no, she married a guy with a lot of dough, and she left the business. I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. I was just a guy who wanted the simple kind of life. And that's the story of my life as told to Louisa May. Hop, 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 the Anderson. Bing, 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 bing.
Louisa May Hopfle Anderson Benson. Yes, we were married, happily married, and we lived on our lovely houseboat on the Hudson. I told him I had a great deal of money somewhere, but both of us forgot all about it. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Benson. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mrs. Benson. How do you do? I'll give you just one kiss. No, no, stop, cause I gotta give our little boat a mop, mop, mop. Boo, boo, ba do boo, boo, ba da boo, 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 ba do boo, ba ba ba. As I look back on it now, our life together was like a gay musical number from one of those big Hollywood movie musicals. Oh, no, 